Well, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, look at that. Mostly red, again, on track now to go down seven days in a row to Steve Lieb on what this could mean for the markets longer term. All right, Steve, we had a huge move. We broke out to new all-time highs. Some would say this is consolidation because we're coming down in drips and drabs on low volume ahead of a major day on Friday. How do you see it? Well, I, I see it as kind of normal. I mean, you're not going to go up for 20 or 30 months in a row. <laughs> 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 and, 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 you know, the market pulls, down, pulls back a little bit, not such a bad thing. But, Charles, this is such a crazy world we live in that you really can't take anything for granted. I mean, I think maybe it's dawned on investors that somebody will win this election. And it doesn't really matter who. It's probably not going to be that good. Do you see the election then already influencing this market? I think it's as we get closer to the, you know, to the actual day, yes. And I think that, again, I mean, for me, I mean, I've said it to other people, but it feels literally like when I wake up in the morning, I'm in a parallel universe. I just can't believe who's running on both sides. I mean, it's hard to... Well, are you concerned then about the, the impact to the economy? I'm very or, concerned. Or I, I think this economy has... I mean, you had, for instance, today we had uh, Donald Trump uh, telling Stuart Varney uh, he's going to double Hillary Clinton's uh, infrastructure plan. Now, he put out a number, 275. I'm still looking into that. I thought her number was going to be like a trillion dollars. <laughs> Whatever it is, though, uh, you know, it seems like both candidates say they're going to come in and they're going to put some money to work immediately to spark job creation. Okay, that I think is not a bad idea, depending on how they pay for it, depending on whether or not they partner Would with bonds businesses. bonds be better than high taxes? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, whatever, yes. But, I mean, no, high taxes is, that's a recipe for disaster. I mean, really, it is. I mean, that's the last thing this country needs at this point. But we're, we have our backs against the wall. I mean, there's no productivity growth. Our banks are basically, you know, just loaded with cash, all dressed up and no place to go, loaded with a combination of cash and debt. And, Charles, if you really want to get a wake-up call, look at these European banks. Deutsche Bank, which is Germany's largest, right. one of the best recognized right. banks in the world, recently traded below its 2009 low. Right. That doesn't say a lot for Europe. It doesn't say a lot for the world. Chinese banks... Well, let's face it, though. Europe is no longer the, uh, the, the pulse of the world. I no, mean, it isn't. They've been bypassed a long time ago, and they're the, going to continue to fade because right. they embrace socialistic policies. They stopped having babies 30 years ago. <laughs> and, and I mean, really, they have, that's why they yeah, have yeah. the immigration problem to begin with. Yeah, it, you're, you're absolutely right, but they still are a big economic block. And if that block But they haven't torn, grown, though. They haven't no, grown they in haven't. a long no, time. No, no, no. We're, 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 you're preaching to the choir. You really are. I totally agree with everything you're saying. And it's unfortunate, though, as a legacy, they still have very big economies. And if those economies start coming unraveled, right. it means a lot of debt comes do, uh, you know, Let me ask you this, then, Steve, um, for the investor watching then, uh, and, and they held on through the thick and thin of this, you know, it's been a wild ride. What do they do now? I mean, do they, you stay the course still or, you know, do you start to wait for, for more cracks to happen? Well, Charles, this is what I would say. And I, I preface it by saying I have not been a gold bug all my life. And I'm not a gold bug now, but I think gold is a necessary investment in today's environment when so many things can go wrong. When you see the Chinese buying gold. So, in other words, as get yourself some insurance. Yes, out there. you've got to have some insurance. Stay with stocks. You're, 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 you feel pretty sure about their earnings come what may, like a Thermo Fisher, which is in the healthcare uh, sector and is not going to be subject to all these crazy regulations. Whomever is going to get rid of these right. regulations, right. Charles, you mentioned higher taxes, right. get rid of regulations, not higher taxes, spend the money, get productivity going. But again, stocks, I think commodities, you want a stock like Rio Tinto, which is probably really? the best managed okay. commodity play in the world. And commodities, incidentally, one thing about the stock market, I just have to add very quickly, as good as it's been, commodities as a group have solidly outperformed it. Oil notwithstanding, if you look at commodities as we a got group, you. they're doing Gold, well. Thermal, TMO, <laughs> yes. and a little Rio Tinto. There you go. Right, you got Steve it. Lee, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks, Next. Charles.